be discussing uh, uh, precision and how precision can affect your work and uh, affect uh, re your uh, the repeatability if you're working in small batches and uh, the fitting of components, the fit of components of uh, in joinery. So uh, I just want to uh, stress how, how, how important, how critical precision can be in your work and it's uh, uh, ac accuracy and precision, both accuracy and precision. So precision is how close measurements are relative to each other, whereas accuracy is how close measurements are to their true value. So if you're, uh, if you're using a reference surface and you're measuring off from a reference surface, that would determine accuracy if you're transferring that measurement to different components on, if you're working in a small batch. But whereas precision is uh, measurements relative to each other. Uh, if you're fitting a tenon into a mortise, it's the precision of how the, the tenon fits the mortise. Are there any gaps or anything? So it's critical to identify uh, reference surfaces and edges on a board to be able to, uh, to determine uh, the accuracy and precision in your work. And I'll give you an example of that. On this board, for example, I always mark the, the edge and the face. And these are the two, uh, and I ensure that these two, uh, the, the edge and the face are perpendicular or square to each other. And that, that's the critical uh, premise or concept of uh, precision. And uh, use an engineer square or any, uh, any tri-square and determine that the, uh, these two surfaces are square to each other. And then subsequently use these two surfaces as references to either thickness or dimension in width the, the, re the remainder of the board. So it's critical that these edges are marked and it's, it's very easy to lose control of, uh, if you don't do this, it's very easy to lose control of, uh, of where you are. So it's almost important, even if you happen to plane that edge, that marking off, I would pencil it back in immediately because it's so critical to your work or, you know, f failing that, just, just keep measuring and ensure that those are the, uh, the square edges. So again, always reference or measure off a, uh, the reference surface or edge. So uh, when I'm an edge or a face of a board is, would be considered the reference surface. Use measuring tools that are known to be accurate. I use a series of uh, uh, steel engineer squares and I've been using these for a number of years. So I have uh, two sets, one at each of my uh, large workbenches. So this is critical in your work to, uh, to ensure that the uh, your measurements are consistent with each other. So if you're using um, another point to, to consider is if you're using a particular engineer square is to, to, and to keep using that same square and throughout that, that build or that uh, throughout the, uh, if you're creating small batches or a unique one-off piece. So to ensure that the, uh, the measurements are consistent uh, between components. If you uh, happen to use a different it's a small combination square or a different square or a double square. It's just these two. If you happen to use them, they're not accurate, then you're, you're just compounding a small error into a larger error. So I tend to use the same measuring tools. Another point to consider is the flatness of surfaces and edges to ensure that joints fit perfectly so glue bonds well. And I'll give an example of that. It's critical that the, uh, the surfaces of boards that are being joined together be flat when it placed against each other, uh, that consistent flatness along the, uh, the length of the board so that the glue adheres well and it creates uh, a good glue joint with, without gaps. And this is, uh, this is something you can measure with their eye. Uh, I use something, uh, I've invested in this uh, steel. So I use a steel straight edge to, uh, to ensure that the, the, uh, the surface either is flat, the, uh, the face or the uh, or the edge is flat, and this is consistent and it's stable, and it's uh, well, it's, it's a unique. It's a little more expensive than any than a ruler, for example, a long ruler. But it, uh, it's it's important in my work that, that my uh, the edges of uh, and faces of my boards are flat when I'm joining them together. So I I tend to use something like this. I would invest in this. It's really not that expensive, but it's uh, it's something you have for the rest of your life. So I would uh, definitely use something similar and I'm sure if you use something different, I'm sure that it's straight. So you could use a, a conventional long tri-square, a conventional ruler as long as you've determined that it's uh, straight 
the rollers are tend to flex, so it's uh, and uh, they get banged up a lot. This is unlikely to get uh, dented or uh, distorted in any way. So, and I wanted to emphasize that point. I also use a uh, to trim boards down the side, uh, boarded uh, ends of boards down the size correctly. I use a shooting board in my work. I highly recommend uh, creating or making your own shooting board. I offer plans for that at woodskills.com, but a shooting board is, is, uh, will enable you to dial in to sneak up on, uh, on ends and then precisely, precisely trim boards down, down to size and width and length. So uh, shavings are trimmed off at either 90 degrees or even 45 degrees for precision fitting. And uh, I'm also going to uh, explain the concept of counting shavings. So uh, when you're more comfortable using hand tools, you should uh, begin to count shavings. Determine what the shaving thickness is of a, uh, what you set your hand plane at, and then use that as a, instead of constantly going back and measuring, you use that that, uh, that setting and the thickness of the shaving that you're removing from the edge or the face of the board to determine how much you need to to, uh, to remove without going back and using uh, measuring tools. So you can quickly use full shavings, the thickness of full shavings to determine, uh, precisely determine the thickness of boards or how much you need, how much wood you need to remove to reduce it down to a particular thickness. And I'll give you an example of that. This is one of the uh, shooting boards I, I have. This is a uh, just to let you understand, it's a left-hand oriented shooting board because I'm left-handed. So I have both a 45 degree attachment and I, have, and I just removed this and it's set to 90 degrees. So I'll give you an example of, uh, of shooting a board at uh, 45 degrees and how accurate it can get. This is a, a non-standard plane. It's really designed for, uh, for a shooting board, but you can use a, a low angle jack or a four plane or anything with a log uh, sole to be able to shoot boards with this. You can, uh, you can almost hear the shaving being trimmed off. And this ensures a, uh, an accurate 45 degree. There's a little technique to using a shooting board. You can see that the shavings removed. So what you need to do is determine the thickness of these shavings. You can use either a small caliper, a small uh, dial caliper in this case, or a uh, conventional standard caliper, sliding caliper, and uh, determine the thickness. Or once you're more familiar with it, you can almost eyeball the thickness and and uh, be able to determine how much to remove from that uh, from the end of that board to bring it down to the correct size. When you're, when you're using an attachment like this at 45 degrees, ensure that it is exactly 45. So I think I've set this protractor. Get yourself a protractor and set it to 45 degrees in this case, and it's an accurate 45 degrees. So this is a, uh, a very very effective way of, of uh, creating, a, well, creating or trimming a 45, or any angle for that matter, that you set down to, uh, to a predetermined size that you need. If we think about it, there's almost no other way to do this. If you do it on a, even on a bandsaw with a small, uh, with a small thin blade that creates a small curve, you'll have a rough edge, and it's uh, the shooting board provides a finished edge. Is what I'm trying to say. And if you use it on a table saw, you're more than likely going to undershoot or overshoot the cut. So it's uh, you'll have so much uh, <laughs> you'll have so much either waste or you, you'll cut the board too short in some, in some case. And so uh, that's why I use, uh, I tend to use shooting boards for almost all my trimming of boards. Unless it's a very large or wide board. So I'll remove that attachment, flip the board around and demonstrate how to create a, a perpendicular 90 degree cut. So the, the premise is to uh, hold the, the board you're trimming against the fence. Keep the, keep the flame and that, uh, that creates these, uh, these small shavings. You can just quickly see that you cannot achieve shavings this thin from, uh, from, any, from any powered machine really. So.
That's, uh, that's the advantage of using a shooting board in your work. And again, it's uh, the disadvantage of doing precision work using a table saw. If you're doing really, really precise work, it's much more advantageous to create, a, create yourself a shooting board. Again, this is left-hand oriented. You can simply swap everything around and create right-handed. I do have a right-handed two or three others. So along with the uh, with the shooting bar, I wanted to mention that you use, uh, I use hand planes uh, much more so today than in the past in my work. So these hand planes introduce precision by, by default because they take thin shavings in, in thousands of an inch. So wood is removed in, in, in thousands of an inch unlike any other, any, any piece of machinery, any power tool, it's, it's almost impossible to achieve that. I should say the, uh, to remove that wood that thin 